Shut off again. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're live. Hi. Nobody's on yet, so that's fine. <clears throat> but we will get people. We got a lot of people last week, guys. Oh. We had like over 40 to 50 views. We had 50, people. 50 views. John, John Goldbeck. Yeah. John Goldbeck. And like, John, a couple people watched the whole time. It was. Uh, so. Yeah, we had John. Wow. Was, uh, wait, wait, wait. Did y'all wait to, for me to leave or something? Mm. Yes. What? Oh, I mean, guys. apparently uh, Justin should be the president of I.O. So. That's correct. I am the president of I.O. <laughs> All right, let's start this damn podcast. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Hey, everybody. It's time for another episode of The Podcast. This week, we have some amazing topics to discuss, including... 85 Bears versus the 90s Bulls. Where's the beef? Owls versus Portillos. Let's talk about it. And the White Sox will be playing in heaven next year, where they'll probably still lose. <laughs> all of that, and of course, we end every episode with the Jagoff of the Week. All of that for this week's episode. And now, gentlemen, it's time for da 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 podcast. All right. Well, and you know what's fun, folks, is that. Um, where we have some fancy new music to add to the podcast, oh. which technically, if you're listening to this part now, you've already heard it because I've already spliced it in. So I'm probably just going to cut all of this out. <laughs> but for those of you watching at home, <laughs> hope we've got enjoying. new music. <laughs> um, all right. Cool. Well, uh, welcome to the Chicago 60 Podcast. I am your illustrious host, Justin Zera. Or for those of us who speak English, Justin J. War. And to my... To the, <laughs> those of us sitting in... Those of you who can see in the middle seat, <laughs> once he comes down from laughing, is my illustrious other co-host... Oh, God. Uh, Stormin' Norman. Stormin' Norman. And, of course, this week we've got two of our good friends back, our uh, reoccurring special guests, part of the C60 crew. We've got... Ron Russell. Ron Russell is back. He's Sorry. back this week. And we've got... Uh, Joe Nilo. Joe Nilo is back. Hello, Joe. Wearing a very fine white Sox hat. Very good for you, sir. That's right, man. Right. Right. That's right. Well, we're, we're, we're nonpartisan. We're not Cubs or White Sox. We're either or. Whatever brings happiness to Chicago is what we're about. Although some of the happiness is <laughs> for one side and some of the happiness is for the other side, I hey, suppose. Hey, both uh, suck right now. Yeah, so well, much happiness. Well, the Cubs are doing all right. Mm-hmm. And they're top of the NL Central, man. Yeah, they've always been doing all yeah. right. But. Yeah, they've always been. White Sox did not lose tonight. Well, that's good news it's for you White Sox fans. All right. All right, well, we've got a very exciting episode for you all here. Uh, but before we do that, cheers to the podcast, folks. Joe's not going to cheers with us. There we go. Okay, where's your beer? Well, go get it. And he left to go get it, but then come back with it. Well, I'm trying to look something up, but we've yeah. already started. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, cheers to the podcast. Okay, we did another cheers. The beers. The beers on the podcast. The beers. The beers and the beers. Sometimes they get confused, but it's very important that you get that middle part Correct. It's yeah. the beers with, and you, sometimes you can have the beers when you're watching the beers. That's a good time for all folks involved. The Bears played their first preseason that game. That is correct. The Bears did play the uh, first preseason game, and I they didn't. lost to the, the Panthers. The Panthers. I'm, I'm That's right. So Norm is originally from the Carolinas. Oh, what? So, so how did you feel about that? We're uh, all looking at you with a very side-eye glance. We moment. did something well for once, unlike when we lost the Super Bowl to Tom Brady. So, yeah, I'm pretty proud Everybody of it. Everybody loses to Tom Brady. I mean, everyone loses to Tom Brady, of course. It's a rite of passage. I mean, I'm, I'm, wait, I'm really waiting for them to put him in the Thanos gauntlet. Hey, so here's like the thing, though. Snapping people the off the Carolina field. Panthers are coached by a former Bear, Ron Rivera. True so bad. does that mean the Bears still won the game? <laughs> Uh, either way, the Bears are winning. Right, Billy Flores? He's out there. He's watching. What's up, Billy? What up, Billy? Uh, Billy. Billy Flores from Da Defense, guys. Uh, we'll see you at the tailgate, sir. And many other things. Billy actually, uh, he, he messaged me the other day. He's like, when are you guys going to have me on to talk about the Bears? And I thought that was a great idea. Yeah. So very soon. Probably at the pregame show at the CBTC, Billy. Probably. 
with uh, everybody there, we will have you on. We'll have the, all the defense guys on. Mm -hmm. That'll be good. Nice. Yes. All right. So tune in for that, man. We'll see you uh, September 5th in every home game over at the CBTC. And shout out to Die CBTC. And the Bear Man. The Bear Man. Uh, now officially inducted into the Hall of Fans. So golf clap to Da Bear Man. Don Walker. Shout out to you, sir. Look sharp in that coat. That's sir. right. Nobody a wears a finer. Coat. Nobody wears a finer bear suit than the Bear Man. Um, cool. All right. Now let's get into the juice. Yeah. The Still juice of the episode. Uh, <laughs> so first things first. I mean, what a segue to be talking about the bears, and that's the first thing. So last week we had debate night, debate night, debate night. And uh, this week it's not really debate night, it's more discussion. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to not, to not make it so formal. But some interesting topics uh, to discuss, and one of them is, uh, let's, let's discuss, gentlemen. So there was, uh, so this will be more free flow than last week where we had Norm give arguments and then Joe had arguments and blah, blah, blah. And I think we could just kind of all choose a side and we'll have a nice friendly little discussion about what we think. Because it's all good for Chicago anyway. It's all good in the Chicago hood, as some folks might say. Um, yeah. So we've got two very iconic teams from Chicago. We're... I think these are, I personally believe, and we could have people argue or send in comments or something ahead of time or whatever, I think the two most iconic teams are the 85 Bears, the 85 Bears with the coach, Mike Ditka, Jim McMahon, Walter Payton, okay, all those guys right there, that's some good stuff, okay? Or, um, Joe last week alluded to Michael Jordan being one of the most iconic Things to come out of Chicago. Does that mean the '90s era Bulls are the most iconic team? I was once in China, where I said I was from Chicago, and someone said, "Ah, oh, Michael Jordan, God of basketball." And there's your answer, <laughs> God of fucking basketball. That's your answer, right there, dude. Okay, well we can't have no. That's not done because I mean that, it's over. That it's ends, so that ends can over. we have pie now? <laughs> <laughs> No pie. No pie this week. We know why the pie is not available. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's shout out to Justin's mom. Yes, shout, shout out, out to my mom. mom and her wonderful pies. Um, you can get some by uh, by requesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm talking out of turn in here. I'm just proposing this as an idea. Hashtag but I would like Justin to come Mom's deliver pies. pies. Oh, I think okay. we can have a bake sale, maybe. We do need to raise money for... Four chairs. <laughs> Four chairs. Uh, well, we're actually going to be getting... Actually, it's a good thing. Before we get into the discussion, a couple of quick updates and some fun things. So, within the next... Well, by the end of this month, mm -hmm. the Chicago CC Podcast is going to have all brand new equipment and a brand new view with new furniture and everything here in the studio. Yes. Okay, so that's going to be happening. That's right. Starting in September, I, I think we can do an official announcement. We will be doing, because we already mentioned it, Tell we will be doing a live pre-game show for, at every home game for Duck Bears at the CBTC. That's the Chicago Bears Tailgating Club, for those of you who don't understand acronyms. <laughs> and uh, we'll be doing a live pre-game show talking about Duck Bears and whoever they're playing against. So we'll be doing that. Yep. We also are doing another film shoot. We got film sketch comedy coming out in September. Yep. And starting in September, we're going to start having our first guests. I mean, Ron and Joe are guests, but they're really we're part of the guess. C60 crew. So they're on quite frequently. But we will be having some other guests like... All those times I was like, we're going to have comedians <laughs> and business owners and other cool people that are from Chicago. They're going to really show up. They are actually showing up starting in September. Why? Because I'll finally have the furniture to have them here. <laughs> <laughs> you can have some that's, really, that's really yeah. the main, uh, main thing. And no, we're also going to have, it's, we're going to look fancy. We're going to have what, what? brand new mics. We've got, I mean, we're going to have the stands. We're going to look like all those other podcasts that you see, though, like, with them, like Joe Rogan with the mic and the, and you, you could talk like that, but it sounds like, hello, good day to you. It's like, because the mic's so goddamn close to his face. Uh, and that's what he says. Go yeah, ahead, I want to know. I want to go back to that uh, that pregame show. Uh, when, when is that and where? And uh, when, where, where do people go to see that? Because that's pretty cool. Well, thank you, Joe, for the wonderful segue to a promotion. Um, the CBTC is located uh, in the South Loop 
on Wabash, and I can't remember the other street name, but it's basically across from Reggie's Bar. So if you, you so Google Reggie's Bar, and then then find I Wabash. Love Reggie. Reggie's and is my favorite there. bar in Chicago, by the way. It's a great bar. Side note. Yes. Not a sponsor. And we will be at the CBTC Tailgating Club, which you can look up on Facebook, and all the address information will be there. But you can uh, we will be there for the opening uh, uh, game of Duck Bears versus the Evil Packers um, on September fifth. That is a Thursday. It is the opening game of the season. Yes. yes. Kicking off the 100th anniversary of the football NFL. and the NFL. So, a few weeks. <laughs> so we will be there, and then we will be at the CBTC doing the pregame show for every home game. Every home so game, pretty much Google yeah. mm-hmm. Chicago Bears schedule, find all the home games, and put them in your calendar, and then go to the CBTC, and you will see us there every time. Or pick and choose which games you want to go see. Whatever, we don't care. We'll, we'll be, be there, there all the time, so it doesn't matter. matter. Can you guarantee that fans will have a better experience than the last year's opening a game against the Packers? Yes. Because mm. we'll be there. Because we'll be there. Exactly. Making them laugh. Uh, and, of course, the Bears are going to win. Yeah, so yeah, that is hands down opinion. what's going to happen here. Yeah. Okay? All right. All right. Cool. Now that we got all that mumbo jumbo out of the way, now let's get into this discussion. So, the 85 Bears or the 90s Bulls. 90s Bulls. Which team do you think is more iconic and gives Chicago a better name throughout the, throughout the United States of America nice and the goals. world? Okay? And go. 90s Bulls, man. 90s Bulls. Six championship versus one. God hey. of basketball. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's hard to top God of basketball in a whole different country. And then you had you had to the, like, so far. It, 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 it's, it's like the list is so damn big. It's kind of hard to not like nothing. Nothing against the Bears. But no, nothing against, against the Bears, Bears at all. At all. Like I watched that Super Bowl win. You know what I'm saying? Forty six to ten against the Patriots. Yeah, that was real. But it was a long. Bulls, that was a long time ago, too. At least we got six out of it. And it could have been eight because Mike, you know, sat down for two years. That is correct. That is true. But did the 90s Bulls ever do a championship dance and song? I submit that they well, did well, not, sir. They How did a song against... before they That's won. That's true. That is they true. They called up. They said, they we're going to win. Them. And they sang and danced about That's it. That's right. And then they went out and did it. That's right. That is some balls to the wall but shit right But do there. the 85 Bears have a steakhouse named after them? Mm. Yeah, just the Ditka Steakhouse. Yeah. Do the 85 Bears have a steakhouse named after the god of basketball? <laughs> no, I don't think so. They have one named after, after the god of coaches. Like, <laughs> Dick. Don't be a dick, be a Ditka, Norm. Okay? That's I'm true. just saying, though, the Bulls, even the colors were iconic. The, the You weren't even yeah. in Chicago, and you were a fan of the Bulls. They have colors of Neapolitan ice cream, sir. Red, white, and black. The <laughs> colors were fucking iconic. Even the 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 giant is a stretch. It's more, it's my That's a stretch. Uh, yeah, okay. Cherry but, instead of strawberry. But this yeah. is the only emblem that has a. It's a giant bull with a giant unibrow, and it still looks badass. <laughs> and those ugly bull in our and it's, look, look at it. It's, it's a giant damn unibrow. Like, it's it a is. unibrow. It is it's a, a unibrow. unibrow. But I didn't even know bulls had brows. I didn't either. I right. do. Now, ours do, though. Yeah, ours do. Hey. Ours do. Well, I, I gotta make, just, you know, for the sake of argument, I gotta make an argument out, out here. Make an argument. Oh, make yeah, thank make you. And, uh, and that is that in all of the mini championships that the Bulls did win, mm-hmm. they Watch yourself. Did not Watch quite, yourself, man. They did not uh, have any real clean sweeps throughout the playoffs. Okay. All those playoff <laughs> games. <laughs> <laughs> it's all uh, good. I was waiting for this opportunity. Go ahead. No, well, well. No, no just, <laughs> look, look, you guys are so, I, I, I'm just doing, I, I would say 90s Bulls all day too, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie in here, alright, and, and I'll, I'll argue that forever, but I gotta play devil's advocate, so, but I'm gonna throw out at the, the 85 Bears won their first playoff game without the defense scoring, I'm, I'm sorry, without, offense scoring, without the, their defense shut out the other team, big fat goose egg zero, the other team scored exactly zero points, which means they won by infinity, and <laughs> in their second playoff game, nice. they That's also shut out the defense. Or, God, I keep screwing that up. They, they also shut down the other team. Big fit, zero. They also won by infinity. And in the Super Bowl, 
they did allow 10 points, but they were allowed 10 points because there, there was first a fumble, and then they kicked the field goal because the, the Bears' offense fumbled, unfortunately, and uh, they kicked the field goal. And then, at, you know, in garbage time, at the end of the game, they took out the starters, and uh, New England managed to score a, a touchdown. And so they got to 10. But the starting defense of the 85 Bears did not allow a single point throughout their entire playoff one. You are absolutely Did the Bulls defense not allow a single point in a basketball game? No, sir. No, sir. I submit they did not. <laughs> 85 Bears. Right, here we go. 85 Bears. Legendary. I mean, we all know that. I mean, the names, you know, Walter, Singletary, Dent, Hampton. I mean, all those guys, you know. The defense was super legendary. Offense was on point. Walter should have got a touchdown in the Super Bowl. That's that's the thing that, it, it, yes. and, and I know Coach, Coach, he, he regrets that, you know. And, and if, if Walter scored Walter, a touchdown, if Walter would, scored that touchdown iconic, would they be more iconic? No, I mean, that is not going to change. I mean, <laughs> that team is super iconic, but the Bulls, the Bulls run, they destroy teams. Like, the Bulls beat teams so bad, I mean, their margin of victory was like, I forgot which... For the first three feet of the second one, but I mean, they were crushing teams by like 17 points, man. I mean, they were. It, the Bulls were winning games at a rate where we just, I felt like we weren't going to lose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and if we were down, it was like, oh, they'll come back. They're going to win. The Bulls, it, it, you felt like we were going to win every When, when Michael game. Jordan hit that shot in 98. Which the, one? The, the, la- <laughs> the, the, final, the final shot. That shot. The final shot. The, the, yeah. the, the one Russell. shot. When he pulled up, he pulled up uh, you know, right at the top of the <laughs> key. Top he looked it down. Every single person, every fucking, every person in the whole world watching that game knew that ball was going in. Joe, there was okay. no question. Joe, it's okay. We've already rated this yeah. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, can swear with right ease here. But, no, but, yeah. that's to be censorship. Yes. Jordan, <laughs> Jordan has our best basketball player ever. Well, if you... If you take it facts aside, yeah. let's talk about facts. what let, like but facts aside, let's talk about what it did to society as a whole. Like what it did to every person in the country where kids in different states were like, no, nah, fuck my home team. I'm rooting for the Bulls. They're the coolest fucking team out there. My boy Jay Nice, shout out to Jay Nice. He was living in New York at the time and when he came here to Chicago, we used to watch games, he would always say, Yo, man, your damn bulls used to always knock out my Knicks. I got so much respect for y'all. Everybody was a Bulls fan, man. Everybody was wearing Jordans. I mean, Mike made everybody wear their shorts long. Everybody was wearing their last shorts, man. Mine. Mike changed the game. And, and, for real, and people like, sleep on Scott, you're, you're, too. Man. For you're, real. You're talking, yeah. you're talking <laughs> worldwide. Yeah, and, and that's the real, that's the argument I was going to make was worldwide. Nobody, nobody watches American football outside of the U.S. Sure. And they do in England and in Canada. Uh, 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 all right, all right. <laughs> they have the Canadian football oh. league. <laughs> a bunch of Canadians. But people, I play people football. are Bulls fans worldwide. People today are Bulls fans because of that team. They are. Okay, but here's a thought about that. Okay. We're talking about iconic things and things, and, and let's let's also have a conversation about culture, yeah. which which we are doing. Uh, which team has affected culture the most? And I think there's an argument for both teams here. Uh, let me also just preface by saying both teams are phenomenal. Okay, let's let's not well. We're, we're not arguing like which team is necessary. They're both. I'm, I mean, we agree but, with you on that. One. But yeah. but yeah. here's the thing. Basketball, obviously, is a more worldwide sport than American football is. Hence, the word American before football. True. So, okay. so, we, so to bring in worldwide things, uh, although it does make sense, basketball is a, a much more worldwide sport than American football is. Super global. Because, because the NFL has not really... For, for, there are a variety of reasons why that is the case. Number one... Uh, in order to do American football, you kind of need money because there's a lot of equipment that's involved. And let's be honest, basketball and the reason why so- the reason why basketball and soccer are two of the more popular sports worldwide is because for soccer, all you, you don't even need a ball. Pele used a fucking cantaloupe. By the way, that's a jersey signed by Pele. I'm gonna cut that out of the podcast, but I have in my house a jersey signed Pele. So what's up? Um, but two for basketball, all you need is ideally. A very bouncy cantaloupe and some sort of a basket. <laughs> yeah, but I, or you know, I so get to be to a, a basketball hoop in this wonderful city of Chicago, where where the rims are not bent. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the rims are not bent, and the nets are not soiled, the and yet children still play the game well. In the dark. Oh, side <laughs> north, side red. But every park around here got beautiful, immaculate tennis courts and softball fields and, and, and shit basketball courts. This is true. This is true. Okay, we can go off on that for a second. <laughs> no, that's today, a whole but, topic. But that's okay. That's what this is all about. So, so the uh, so that's one reason why to kind of take into context for worldwide stuff. I think it, there is some validity to that, but it's it's hard to use that against when we're talking about the which Chicago team is more iconic and has had more of an effect on culture because American football, as much as they're trying in England and other places, it's just not gonna. Be, it's not going to be accepted in place because people just can't play the damn sport. Like right. people, people in America, we can do growth hormones, get get big and buff, whatever, because we can. But in other countries, they literally cannot do it. Well, so, basketball, all you need is one person. Also true. Like football, you need a team. Basketball, right. all you need is an asphalt and something to throw a ball. Or, or, or you just need one kid with a big imagination. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and then he throws the ball, and then oh, he caught it, and then he's running to the end zone. You really want just. to be a ball player. <laughs> just as a six year old. Just by yourself. But no, I, I feel like the 85 Bears is exactly like the 2016 Cubs. I feel like it's that. Oh, this is interesting. That, Ooh. that win, Ooh, that means a, a good, lot. That's, that's a good, cold. But that's cold. it means a lot. It means a lot for, for people in the past, for people now. And but why iconic? Done. Compared to, like, to me, the, the 85 Bears are the same as the 2016 Cubs. It meant a lot. It was important. Everyone cheered. Everyone was happy. And then that's what it was. If it happens again, fantastic. But what the Bulls did in the time of when, the win, When it happens again. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Be this I mean, year. Win. I mean, when. Now I, I, mean, I got to shout out to the 05 White Sox. We got we to gotta shout that yep. out as well. Also, a team that dominated the playoffs. That is true. They sure did. They, with small ball. We can discuss... That oh no, we can do 05 White Sox versus the 05 White Sox actually episode. are still ha- holding the record for most uh, uh, for best postseason record. Thank they you. Only lost one. Right now we're talking game. about the '85 Bears and the '90s Bulls. Okay. Bulls. Stop talking about baseball. We'll get to baseball on another day. But I just now. mean like that moment is to me they are similar. Yeah. Okay. Now I, I'd like to propose. Uh, you can edit this. Too, but this is stop a, saying it. Just say shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as a side discussion. You're now. just gonna sound silly now about saying, "Well, we well, can edit this," and I'm gonna leave you. No, in no, you got But we can edit this, and everybody's gonna know that you thought this was editable content. This and I'm gonna leave it content. in just to have you all right, all right. like an idiot. All right, but I, as a side discussion, I always I I argued when when the king of pop from the 1980s, Michael Jackson, when he died. And everyone was saying that he was the greatest entertainer of all time. I was arguing to everybody that Michael Jordan was the greater entertainer of people. And that, I think that's an interesting argument. That Cool. Uh, so another topic to discuss is Michael Jackson, Jackson versus, versus Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Who is the <laughs> greater Which MJ was, the... was better? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a good discussion. That is a good discussion. I'm, I'm making the point Somebody make a note that of I think that. Michael Jordan, I, that I'm argu- I have argued in the past, that Michael Jordan is the greatest Entertainer, entertainer of all time. Okay, so that's yeah, that's, right. that's, 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 that's a deep yeah, Somebody, so, Norm, make a note We're of that, please. That, yeah. Send a send a text message to the group. Okay. Stop bringing up great topics that we can't get into <laughs> tangents. Right. We're talking about the '85 Bears right. and the '90s Bulls. That's, that's what do, okay, man. which team is more iconic and affected American culture more? Now. The, 85 the, Bears. The, the, Would you let me talk goddamn it? Well, I, I'm just, stop ruining my segues and transitions. Fuck. You're going to bring up another thing where we're like, ooh, that's good to talk about. And then we're going to keep talking about things that would be big, good to talk about. You brought up the topic. The and, and I was going to... Die! You're being a jag off. Would you relax? All right. All right. Now, uh, the 85 Bears. Now, I know the, the Packers fans and many people are like, oh, the 85, that was a long time ago. But, uh, Mike, really you've got... Let's, let's say some stuff. That's true. We got that's true. Billy is, has been saying some stuff. We got Mike Ditka. Okay. Okay. Let me just throw this out. First of all, the Bulls versus the now I know the Bears have more players because it's a football team versus a basketball team. However, there were I would argue that there are still more iconic individuals on the Bears. It's not like the Bears had two really amazing stars that led them through. I mean, obviously Walter, but they had a whole team of fucking giants. Two they had Chicago. Ron. No, but to everybody. No, to Chicago. No, to everybody. 
Mike Ditka is nationally known. Walter Payton, nationally known. Uh, uh, Mike Singletary, nationally known. Uh, let me think. Jim McMahon, even like with the headband, national. Like that whole team is known. Dent, uh, Hampton, all these. Otis Wilson, like all these people Jim. know these people because of how dominant. Go to They're a still different rated. state and dominant. say any of those names. I guarantee like, you. Who? Well, I get. Well, okay. Well, now <laughs> we're getting into. No, we're not doing that. How many kids in the world? And and I'm not being facetious here. This is a question. How many kids in the world started wearing headbands because of Jim McMahon? Is that a joke? Or is that a joke? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This, this, this is, I don't think, before, this is I, before my time, so I, I don't, don't know. think uh, I don't think students at MIT were like, you know what we should study? <laughs> People wearing headbands after Jim McMahon with the Super Bowl. If that's how, if that's, what that's how MIT, MIT people sound, by the way. If that's what you do in MIT, I want to go. I know, I want to go to MIT. Did, for that didn't as well. Gary Fensick go to maybe not MIT? He went to Harvard or something. He, he was he was from some, perhaps. We, that's gotta, true. We, gotta, we should know this. I mean, we should maybe. He's, he's from some Ivy League school. He is. But think about it. So you got you got okay. Not only that, but the Bears, the '85 Bears, started. I mean, we are. are to an extent on our show, mimicking the super fans, which was a whole iconic thing that got started primarily because of the Bears. They started with the Bears. Now, I know they had Michael Jordan on eventually for the super fans, and they had like a whole skit when Michael Jordan hosted SNL. Which is but that's the thing. As a team, like, is the 90s Bulls really just Michael Jordan? So is it really just Michael Jordan, or is it the team that's iconic versus the Bears, which is an iconic Team. You see what I'm saying? That's still affected hey, culture. We're not taking anything away from the 85 Bears, so I don't want anybody to say that. But the 90s Bulls had teams. You cannot win on one person. Okay? The NBA has shown that. But could anybody other than Michael Jordan make it? Was, okay, it was other still, players on the yes, team? Absolutely. We could, but could anybody else? Dennis Robin. Okay, well, I'm Dennis Rodman. Three. <laughs> but is anybody going to say, Oh, I love that big Luke Longley. I, no, I, I see your argument. Tony this, Kukos. This is a, no, this is a okay, good argument. So he's making the argument that yeah. if the 90s, if you imagine the 90s Bulls without Michael Jordan and you took the 85 Bears without Walter Payton, now which team is more iconic? I would feel, okay, you know what? Uh, the mm-hmm. Bears don't win a Super Bowl without Walter Payton. They, they probably don't. They don't get. They with don't that get defense. To, I mean, they won't yeah, with the defense. They're gonna be pretty close. Though. I mean, Walter Payton. We can't take away from Walter Payton. Walter Payton is probably one of the best football players of all time. Also, yeah. but but you're saying at least at his position, their the defense best. was super stingy. I don't know if the Bears are that good to win to, to win it all without Walter. And of course, the Bulls don't win anything without Mike. We know that. Yeah. But yeah, Scotty Pippen couldn't do it. So no, that's, that's, no, no one remember the Bulls without Michael. Yeah, no, nobody would. We so that's the thing. Be a Are the asking. '90s Bulls really just Michael Jordan? Because I mean, no, Michael Jordan, no, they're not a basketball. No, they're not. No. They're not just not Michael Jordan. All. Everyone contributed. Just because I mean, everyone played a role. You got to play defense. Like Ron Harper was locking down people. You know what I'm saying? People might not know his name, but if you're a basketball fan and you know ball, you know who Ron Harper is. You know he played for the Cavs. He played for the Clippers. You know what I'm saying? He was killing until he tore his knee up. But when he came to the Bulls, he everyone had a role. Everyone did their job very well. Do your job. Phil Big Tom Thibodeau. <laughs> Phil Jackson? I mean, shit. Phil Jackson is more iconic than Mike Dicker. No offense. I mean, Phil Ooh. got the rings, man. I don't, I don't think so. I don't See, think so. If, There's no way. Phil Jackson attempted to, to grow a better stash than Mike Dicker, but that thing, is impossible. This thing. Phil might have... With the recent years of Phil Jackson, him screwing up with the, with the Knicks and everything, you know, so he's kind of he got like a, 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 a dark cloud over him right now. But I would say that I was because here's the thing, no offense to Dicker, but Buddy Rock, Buddy Ryan, he was the coach of that defense, man. Yeah. So I mean, mm-hmm. you, you got to give him some credit too. That's true. Phil Jackson was the master of that team. Yes, but here's the problem with your Phil Jackson argument. He fucking went to the damn Lakers. And there are, I mean, we love, we still love Phil Jackson for his era, but he's not going to be as beloved as Mike Ditka because Mike Ditka played for the Bears, he coached the Bears, got us a Super Bowl, and then he stayed in Chicago. He didn't go coach another team. He was, he Chicago, yeah, yeah, through and through. He went but Phil Jackson the went to the he Lakers and, and won again with the Lakers. He, he went, went and coached the Saints. He did leave. Yeah. Are you saying? All right, so I, I screwed up on my history a little but bit. But are we saying the most iconic team for Chicagoans, from Chicagoans, like in Chicago, or are we saying the most iconic team? Well, that's for you to argue. 
Yes. <laughs> well, because if we're saying... <laughs> I mean, all things are right, if, we're, if, we're, if we're saying in Chicago, then you can even break it down to an economic standing. Uh, well, how well, much money they bring in. <laughs> exactly. And, well, and, and well, how, how, how much really? money? Really? Actually, I mean, actually the Bears and the Bulls, remember, from... Uh, we five versus were, 90. The NFL... Uh, the okay, the NFL definitely... I mean, it's, it's oh, yeah. number one in the States. Like, it's bringing the most revenue out of all the sports. But the NBA mm-hmm. is starting to make some noise because it's so global. But if you're going back from 85, you're going... The, 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 the Bears got a squad right now. So it's real good. It's fun right now. We yes. got a team that's, like, really competitive. The Bulls, we still a couple seasons away, but we had a really good off season. We did. We I feel all like players. okay. So let's look at it like this then. Even though the Bulls are not the iconic team that they used to be, they're still the fourth richest NBA uh, franchise. You I know what I'm saying? That's correct. Yes. So if you look at the Bears, well, where, where are the Bears as far as the franchise they go? Were, we just talked about that two weeks ago. Seventh most iconic. Seventh. Seventh, seventh like, most known. Uh, franchise in the NFL. In the NFL. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know if that's Seven? a good way to... Seven. That's disappointing. It is a little disappointing. It is. That's I don't know why they were so I mean, low. Ten. What I were the Packers? I don't know. They did the, the, the Tribune only listed what Chicago's teams were listed. They didn't list all gotcha. the other teams. Normal, look it up for us right now. But here's, okay. We let, me make, let, me, let me make, we better be higher than the Packers. I'm going to fucking throw a goddamn fit on hey, this podcast right not, now. We might not. So, hey, I would not be surprised if we were not higher than the Packers, might, man. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. I would be very upset. Yeah, I Because I don't like the Packers be beating too. us at any fucking at anything. thing. anything. Here's my argument for the Bulls, though, okay? Because uh, I'm not just trying to stick with one side. Okay. Here's my argument for the Bulls. Michael Jordan has a shoe line that is still in existence today, yep. Air Jordans. And he, I believe Michael Jordan is a big reason why Chicago is still one of, is probably, it, I believe it is the number one hub to recruit basketball players in the whole country. Everybody in there's mother, uncle, university is coming to Chicago to pick basketball players. You see the people in Kentucky, in fucking uh, at, at North Carolina, at Duke, where are all their top players coming from? Fucking Chicago. Uh, then, yeah, and I think that's the big thing. Like that's like going out to the courts. Chicago definitely. Chicago puts out economic though. Chicago puts out some. some because we have a city, we have the ability to do more basketball. We have a group of people who've seen, and I'm going to be honest, a black icon, a few black icons. Yeah. Create that 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 way for them to actually have a pathway to jump into. And a you got to start with like, Isaiah Thomas for for a long time here in the city. The people, the uh, up and coming basketball players, were looking up more to Isaiah Thomas than the Michael Jordan because Isaiah Thomas was from Chicago. But he played Jordan's from New York. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> from Carolina. Yeah. 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 Yes. Dorm, Dorm's got the double and see, connection. That, that's the only reason why I think for the, and this is me going on side section, but for the Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan debate, it, they both were fashion icons in, in a whole, oh. it, it'll go down. So that's going to be something else. But, uh, so facts. It'll go down. It'll go down. Facts. Facts. Um, facts. The Packers are like 20-something. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Down with that. So, right. um, number one, Denver Broncos. Denver uh, Broncos? Because of John Elway. Uh, the two team. is the Dallas Cowboys. I'm surprised they're not number one, actually. Three <laughs> is the Kansas City Chiefs. Four the is Chiefs. the Giants. Five, the Buffalo Bills, six, the Miami Dolphins, and seven, us. Well, we know why the Miami Dolphins, because of Ace Ventura Pet Detective. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk and to me, And Dan Marino. Dan Marino. The, is he, was he the only guy who beat the Bears? Yeah, that year. Yep. He was the only one, right? Yeah. It was Miami. We were undefeated and, until we played their ass. And they had mm-hmm. an undefeated season, but they only played, they only had 13 games, I think it was. Or Dan Marino. 12 or 13 games. In the back, yeah, Dan Marino. I, I, I got another uh, uh, Question slash argument for just throwing this out there for you guys. Uh, you guys are arguing about the coaches, and I want to ask you now: Excellent. Who would you rather interview, Mike Ditka or Phil Jackson? Mike Ditka, man. Yeah, Mike would be a better uh, interview. Yeah, so <laughs> is it, that's an argument for iconic. Also, okay. how many people do you see wearing sweaters? Phil Jackson wore sweaters, but is anybody wearing a Phil Jackson sweater? No. They're wearing a Mike Ditka sweater, okay? Yeah, with right. the Bears right around there. We're coming out with t-shirts that are going to be mimicked off of 
Duck Bear's sweater that Mike Ditka used to wear. Everybody does the flick off sign because of Mike Ditka. I mean, Mike Ditka is, when you talk about coaches in Chicago, you're talking about duck coach Mike Ditka. You're not talking about other coaches, okay? That's the one you're talking about. So there is an ESPN article um, that says greatest NFL teams of all time, uh, and the 85 Bears are number one. So there's a fact for you there. Yeah. Well, the 96 Bulls would be number one. That is true. No. Uh, probably. I mean. But again, just in terms of, this, let's bring it back to like cultural but wait, things can that we, Can we shout out to Chicago for having two teams that are number one in our sports? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. You know what? And and uh, I just got to say that, the, honest, in all honesty, the, the 1906. Black Sox? Cup, no, I was in, no, no, 06 Cubs were probably the, the best uh, baseball team ever. And they lost to the White Sox in the World Series. Not that people go back to 1900s, but if you go yeah, by... What the hell are we talking about? If, <laughs> Stop bringing up baseball. If you want to be a day. baseball nerd, the 1906 <laughs> Cubs the were the best baseball the team Bulls. of all time. Bears and Bulls. Bears, Bulls. Bears, Bulls. So we got three... Of, of the top three sports, we got the three best teams. That's, That's all fantastic. I'm saying about Chicago. That's right, because <laughs> here's another thing. The Bears have the 46th defense... Yeah. Which has never been replicated. Never like there's never been a more dominant defense in football. Now they try and say the was it the two thousand Ravens? They're kind of close, but really, the four, the Bears forty six Buddy Ryan defense. I forgot all is, about those Ravens. Yeah, the, but, the but, but 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 they still weren't as dominant as the the eighty five Bears. Nobody you even mentioned in the playoffs. They had two playoff games where the teams couldn't even score, and one game where they couldn't score, and then they scored touchdowns to win the game. Like you, like it's just what, there's no it's dominance. Like in terms of like the bull, the the '90s Bulls were obviously very dominant. Yeah, they were. And <laughs> I would still argue that the '90s Bulls are still the '90s Bulls are probably the best basketball team to probably ever have been, probably because of Michael Jordan. Put the football in Michael Jordan's hand and see what happens. Yeah. Well, he's a, well, he's six. six I mean, more than likely it'll be like. He just go but, for his legs. <laughs> I'm mean, saying like baseball. Yeah, right. However, here's another thing. Michael Jordan did get into movies. Space Jam, one of the greatest movies of all time. All time. I don't know if any Bears were in any movies that I can think of. So I mean, like culturally, which team did more? The Bears. Let's go. Let's just go through the list, okay? Right. The Super Bowl Shuffle. Yeah. Mike did that. Mm-hmm. The Super Fans. Walter Payton, headbands. <laughs> Just headbands in general. Headbands, headbands. in general. Yeah. <laughs> All headbands. Uh, the phrase "da." <laughs> Nobody That's else funny. says that That's... except for for because of the Bears. Okay. That's... Um, the forty six no. defense. The most uh, uh, what? Uh, that's okay. So that's most of the things I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> the sweater. The sweater. <laughs> now the Bulls. Michael Jordan. Uh, 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 Space Jam. <laughs> everything else associated with Michael Every, Jordan. Everything else really. Like Air Jordan. The, the shorts. The long shorts. The long shorts. Yeah, the long shorts. The bald shorts. head. Michael Jordan. Right. People yeah. started cutting their hair off. Yeah. Well, True story. When I was five years old, I went to to get a haircut, and uh, the lady asked what haircut I would like, and I said I wanted my haircut like Michael Jordan. And I guess my mom was like, wait, how is that? And then they're like, oh, wait. Oh, no, no, yeah, no. And she was like, oh, no. hell no. <laughs> but here's what. Dennis Rodman's here. True. That's true. Dennis Rodman. Okay. Okay. Dennis Rodman. The Dennis Rodman. Rodman. The word. Dennis Rodman. The word. Dennis Rodman. The word. I mean, he was, like, piercing himself and doing all these fucking shit. And he was jumping out. And, I mean, and now he's the ambassador to North Korea. Thank you. <laughs> hey, let's not forget. Because hey. we are saving the world from nuclear annihilation because of the, because Chicago, of the Bulls. Chicago Bulls. I mean, <laughs> because of Dennis Rodman. Also, oh, here's another good. point. What number does every other person in any sport want to wear? Twenty three. Twenty three because oh, of Michael Jordan. Jordan. He is he is in general probably one of the most iconic people and sports I, people of all time. So I guess people I get I get people. with that argument, we're ultimately saying that Michael Jordan is the most iconic thing, but the eighty five Bears as a whole is more iconic than the Chicago Bulls. I would I would have to say that's the case. Despite like the Michael Jordan I'm, is the most iconic Chicago I'm thing. I'm going to say Michael Jordan is more iconic than the 85 Bears. Uh, you just heard it right now. He okay. gave us six rings. Six rings. We got, that's the most championships. Okay, so go ahead and add all the other championships together. 
What Black Hawks got what? We, Black Hawks had a had a couple back in the day, <laughs> yeah, and three. recently they had three. That's right. Cubs got one. White Sox got one. Or do the White Sox have another one for you? Well, well, yeah. It was in the modern era. We in talk, total, the Cubs to have more. Exactly. Two or three. We, we, we talk about modern. Have like two from or from three. our grandparents onward. Yeah, we're, right. talking, we're talking modern. <laughs> but era. technically, the Bears have more championships, but they only have one Super Bowl. True, right. Yeah, because back then, yeah, it was like, what, four teams and shit? You right. know what I'm saying? So, I mean, exactly. Look, so, it's, look, it was a lot easier to win look, those championships. Look, man. That is Kata Staley. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred years, Bulls, man. hundred years today. That's this right. Year. This That's is right. Bulls, man. Hence the one hundred. And the Bulls were an expansion team. They weren't even one of the original teams, man. That's right. Like, That's true. I mean, the Bears had, were the original team. They they were the original. Yeah, they were. They were the original. Because uh, George Hallis started the right. whole damn league, pretty much by himself. Papa Bear. Papa Bear. Shout out to. Virginia. We didn't even talk about Papa Bear and That's the McCaskies. I, I mean, shout you know, out to Virginia. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandma. That's right. Grandma. Is it time for us to vote? I don't know if we need to. I don't mean we need to vote. I think uh, I think I think we I think we summed it up pretty well here. Yeah. Michael Jordan is number one. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. the eighty-five yeah. Bears, Chicago Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's cool. That's correct. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> correct. I can get that All right, Chicago. There you got you. You just got your answer. Michael Jordan, <laughs> then the eighty-five Bears, and then the Bulls. Nineties <laughs> Bulls. And with that, moving yeah, on right cool. along. In other news. All right, let's get to topic number two. That was a fun one, but I think this one's going to be oh, a little yeah. bit more fun. So, ladies and gentlemen, there, Chicago, let, let's do a little stuff here. First of all, Chicago has some of the best food in all of the world and definitely has, in my opinion, and I think this could be even factual, the best junk food in all of the world. There are certain foods you cannot get anywhere else other than Chicago. And one of the most iconic Chicago foods, staple foods that you can only get here and nowhere else, the Italian beef. That's right, baby. The beef. The beef. We're talking about the beef. We're talking about the bears, the beets, and the battle scar Galactica. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought of it. I'm like, let's, uh, yeah, I thought of it. I'm like, let's go with it and let's see how it sounds. It was all right. Not one of my best, but... Uh, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with it. Um, okay. Hold on. A little, okay, a little overlap there. Um, all right. So we are going to discuss which... So there are, there are two majorly iconic places that serve the Italian beef. That is Al's Beef mm-hmm. and Portillo's. Mm-hmm. Portillo's and Al's Beef. Yeah. Now... The question I pose to you, gentlemen, is which establishment has the better beef? Dude, hey, both of those beefs are good, and I think I gotta go. Man, I love Al's, man. I love Patillo Super. Al's, Al's got that. It's that the way they 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 put that they peppers that the way they the the the, 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 the seasoning, man. Are you serious, bro? You put some mozzarella in that motherfucker. <laughs> Man, I should be like halfway eating out the damn drive through and shit. Only thing is, it's like. Ryan's got goddamn drooling right now. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> dude, Al's beef, dude. Hey, I see an Al beef at the crib. It's like, yo, that's good shit, man. But yeah. hey, I just had Portillo's the other day, though. I can't yeah. I, I got to say Portillo's. I, I, don't, I don't know. There's something about Al's beef. Like, by the time you put it, by the time they dunk it and you put it in the bag, it's already falling out the bag. You got it. Yeah. You got it. I do easy drip. <laughs> right. I do easy drip. And then sometimes you get in there and it's a stale roll because they hadn't done anything the next day. But I will say this about Al's Beef, the Al, Al's Beef in my neighborhood, they were so fucking good that as that the city was going to knock down the entire block to put up a red line and they kept the Al's Beef. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you know what? You know what? Al's 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 they, oh, were, oh, <laughs> they were like, you know what? Let's just go around it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, we got the contract. It's just like, no, nah, you gotta keep that beef up. What are you doing? Go around. Like dude. they were busy knocking stuff down in this area to, to 
to build a better red line for uh, Rick, to get to Wrigley Field. And they're just like, we're, we're not going. And Al's beef is like, you're going to do what? And they're like, you know what? Let's just destroy these buildings over here. And this will have the, the subway go like that. And then just make it way. We don't need to touch you. So I got I to gotta say, that's, that's, some, that's some awesome shit. All of the engineers went, we have to do what? <laughs> <laughs> they was, but one was like, oh, hell no. And then was, but the best part is all the other restaurants next to them, though, there's like two other restaurants next to them. They're like, yeah, no, where to go, Al's? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, keep us open. Yeah. And then and then all the engineers went, we got to do what now? <laughs> and then they're like, but have you had it? Yeah. And they went to the house yeah. like, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> they put that shit underground That's and right. it comes up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a damn roller coaster. This is, <laughs> this is the roller coaster portion of the red line. Um, yes, but I should, let, let me make one quick note here. Al's Beef is specifically known for Dot Italian yeah, beef. Yeah. They do other things, but when you go to Al's Beef, yeah. it's in the goddamn name. You're going for an Italian beef. You, you don't go the there and you go, oh, let me get a pala sausage from Al's Beef. No, you go and you get a beef from Al's Beef. Sure. Portillo's, oh, there's exactly. a lot of other there's things at Portillo's. Of Portillo's. You, there's a lot of things at Portillo's. You can go for the hamburgers, you can go for the great. hot dogs. Yeah. There's Everybody a lot of things you can go to yeah. Portillo's yeah. for. The hamburger, you know, all you the stuff. You go on the other side, you get the pasta, 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 salads. Yeah. Shout out to that chop salad, man. Yeah. Don't yeah. forget the oh, chocolate yeah. cake has mayonnaise okay. in it. It does so, have yeah, mayonnaise. Yeah. But Portillo's, like, you go there, you get a whole experience, a it meal, is. uh dining. Yeah. Like, it's it's. They write, your, they write your name in right. the gumbo. I, the will, I will say, Al's Beef Fries, I know we're talking about specifically beef, but Al's Beef Fries are fucking on point. They are. They are. I was going to say that. Yeah, they they're really good. Always but on get point. ready to get the itis and get greasy, and you got you got to. I mean, no, you, you gotta, feel it. You got to do that like easy drip, man. You can't let them dunk your whole sandwich. I mean, the man. other thing is, the other thing is, I don't you like go, that wet, I don't like no wet, no wet sandwich. When you go to Al's so beef, right. you can eat a beef the yeah, proper you know. way, which is you Stick. you get in your stance yeah. and you you stand, you get in yeah. your stance, you open up the package, and you just go to town. You get into beef stance, okay? Beef stance. <laughs> but at Portillo's, there aren't any counters to get into a beef stance. You gotta sit. You're a pedestrian at Portillo's. You're not. You're not in this. You're not. Uh, you know, speed car racer. <laughs> at, like like you could be at Al's. That's you true. Know? Uh, you, you gotta, what you, gotta, you really gotta point out here is that Al's beef is the city. Here we go. Here we <laughs> go. Oh, no, he said Al's beef. Were you <laughs> Al's beef. Al's beef. <laughs> it just sounds more Chicago. I, I don't know what I, I'm does. not the accent. I'm not the accent guy. But look, <laughs> Port, Portillo's is Portillo's is uh, is the king of the suburbs. Yeah. Al's beef is, is this, Al's That's beef the city. I, I mean, you're in the city. You want a beef. Get, I don't even know where Portillo's. There's like one Portillo's in the city. Hey, but that's that's true. that Portillo's is yeah. jumping yeah. all, all the time. Day. It is very I'm strategically not, located. I'm, yes. Yeah. I'm going to Portillo's. I'm choosing Portillo's. I wish there were more Portillo's because Al's beef gives me diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Good ass beef. <laughs> if you know, Joe is all the iconic phrases. Yeah, I used to walk. I used to walk. Uh, 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 that was the furthest I walked when when I was when I was working in the West Loop. And I and I, I every day because you got to mix it up. You got to go a different place every day. The furthest I would ever walk was for the Owl's Beef. I would walk uh, about about a mile and a half, close almost two miles. I'd walk the Owl's Beef, and I knew I, I'd have to go to the bathroom later, but. It was at work. I didn't mind. <laughs> it was really? worth it. <laughs> hey, man. You got diarrhea at hey, work for a For real? <laughs> the fact that you know what's going to happen after yeah. that moment and the fact you cool with doing it at work. <laughs> got Dude, there. I, I got to get to you. Walked a mile. I need, I, I need, <laughs> I need to be in the comfort of my home. When I'm like, uh, you know, no, but taking, you're getting paid for that. When I'm that taking time. rounds to the you're getting paid. You're getting paid for the time. So you're getting paid for the you're time. Get, if you're sitting on the toilet for half an hour, not, I'm not, I don't know if I would go to Al's. I'm not sure if I would go that to Al's when I wasn't. Because that's but you, you do make a point though. In, in Chicago, Al's Beef is the place that everyone who lives here would go to. Portillo's is that that um, tourist attraction on the way. It's nothing wrong with it. You love it when you get there, but you have to go all the way downtown. You have to be in downtown. Yeah. You can go to the corner and get an house. There's another one like at Homewood. Oh, around my sister's place, I think. But yeah, you're right. I don't know any other... That's true. It's, it's a, a few more... It's a few more... It it's a few more owls, definitely. Yeah. 
There's some owls sprinkled around, but Portillo's really has the suburban market I do. Hat, I, for sure. I even think Portillo's has the market, period. Yeah, I still I mean, they're expanding. I mean, people sure. are just, uh, overall, I think people are going to take, going to gonna choose Portillo's over owls. But, yeah. man, owls, owls, I mean, both of them are great, but, but man, owls, the best beef? But who has the best beef? Owls. Owls. I agree. I'm going to say owls, I guess. I think, gentlemen, what the we flavor, need to do... The flavor? The flavor? We need to we go need to Al's Beef. We need to I guess we need to go to Al's Beef. Oh, we need to go to Al's Beef and said? Portillo's. Cool. Al's Beef it's and Portillo's. Out. We're going we're gonna to tag you all. Is this the succession? We need to do it. This is like Coke. <laughs> this is like a Chicago hey. version of Coke versus Pepsi. Yeah, it is. This is, Ooh, this is some blind kind of taste test. A blind beef. We can taste. already know. A blind we, beef. We know beef what they taste off. like. A beef, a, beef, a, beef off. a beef off. That sounds too sexy. That sounds very. <laughs> when I went to look at beef off, I did not get Chicago 6. I got something completely different. <laughs> oh, man. That would. <laughs> It's not that kind of podcast. <laughs> hey, man, I can't wait to beef off. I, I think you need to rephrase I mean, that. I, I feel like for the next podcast, or at least for a video on itself, we should do uh, we a, will. Call it a beef off. Marvel, Marvel, like, put that in the notes. Beef off. Okay. We got the, M, the, the MJ versus the MJ. hashtag exist already? We got, okay, Norm. O six, uh, o- o- 05 Sox versus 16 Cubs. MJ versus MJ. Michael Jackson versus Michael Jordan. And then the beef off. Wow. Portillo's That's versus Owls. Are we really hashtagging that? Oh, we're going to hashtag beef off for <laughs> you sure. You heard it first, folks. Hashtag beef off. <laughs> Duh beef off. Make sure you read it first. That's right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> read it completely before you That's right. That's right. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be typing that into Google. <laughs> <laughs> I typed in beef off by accident. Hey, right? did, did, you mean, did you mean how to masturbate? <laughs> uh, I just want to talk about Italian beef. <laughs> But uh, that could be something else too. Either way, so Italian nice. beef is a Chicago thing, and both of those places do a beef proud. But we gotta figure out. Let, let me let me ask you. the blind question. taste beef off. Which beef is the best? So yeah, I don't know if I can do that because I know what they both taste like. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, but, you, you, but if you got your eyes blind, oh, uh, do y'all really think when your eyes can't see <laughs> that your taste don't work? <laughs> we will find out. We will do it. No, I'm fine. We're gonna do it. We, we'll we, do a guest do portion. We'll, we'll get a, we'll get a bunch wait. of items. We'll get we'll get the beef. We'll Damn. get the fries. I it's believe they both do shakes. We we'll do so shakes. We do. We go outside. Hey, stuff. so we're gonna blindfold you, and we want you to test our beef. <laughs> we want you to try these two different beefs. If somebody like, oh, said we're gonna blindfold you, and want you to taste your not blindfold me because I'm gonna get something yeah. else, and yeah, I'm just kind of come up behind him and like, don't worry, you won't hurt. Yeah. If anybody ever comes up to me like, hey, we're gonna blindfold you, and then you're gonna taste my beef. <laughs> and then they and then they get behind me and do like a Joe Biden rubbing on my shoulders. I think I'm going to vomit. <laughs> Biden's beef off. <laughs> Biden's beef off. Hashtag, Biden Hashtag beef Biden's off. beef off. Um, See, I'm, wow. now I'm going to print off little Biden pictures and put them for each. <laughs> I would. Oh, I would yeah, love no, we're that. going hard for this. Yes, we're going to do that. Just do that. Is it, you have the yeah. Device? It's, right. it's going to be called the beef off. All right. All right. So I guess for now. What, what we can agree to right now, mm-hmm. before we do the actual taste test, what yeah. we, I think what we came to the conclusion of is that Al's has got the city and Portillo's has got the burbs. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. You heard it here first, folks, on the Chicago 60. Al's beef takes it in the city. Portillo's takes it in the burbs. But when we do the beef off, we will tell you which beef tastes the best. <laughs> All right. All right. Stay tuned. Moving right uh, along in Otter Nose. Now, Joe Nilo brought up a very interesting topic to me the other day when we were hanging out. And he had mentioned that the White Sox are going to be playing a game against the Yankees at Leo Field of Dreams. That's right. The baseball pitch field. I just used a soccer term. I just realized that. The, the baseball field. In the movie Field of Dreams, they're going to be playing a game there. This is correct, right, Joe? You've heard about the, you, this? Is I heard about this, too. Ron's heard about this. I, I don't know how you haven't heard about this, man. This I have the biggest heard about news this. in Chicago oh, snap. this week. Oh, um, snap. So, yeah. Uh, what are, how do we feel about, about this? I, 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 uh, I'm a, I, don't, I think this is a dumb idea. <laughs> I so, think this is dumb. So, here's my question. Because I'm a dick. 
how many people are going to dress up, because if so, I'm dressing up as James Earl Jones, and uh, who's going to start choking on hot dogs? That's fucking stupid. Just because it's a gag, and it's the perfect time to do it. Like, how many bits, are, and who wants, uh, who wants to watch the... <laughs> okay, so they're reenacting... <laughs> They're re- reenacting the game? I mean, well, well I'm, you know, okay, maybe bad it's choice. It's like a civil war. Okay. Civil war. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to reenact the game. But it's, what they're doing is, I mean, they're, they're playing in front of an 8,000 seat stadium. You know what I'm saying? So they, they're really trying to make this like back then. I don't know. I think it's stupid. Sorry. Will they will they be in the outfits of the era? Of course, I'm sure they are. I would imagine they go rock right those throwbacks with the big like oh, giant ass gloves, the four finger gloves. <laughs> <laughs> None of them are catching anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, helmets. no helmets. You got a bat with the with the. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be some. Yeah. Now the coolest part is if someone steps across the field and they immediately get old, and I'm like, nah, that was a show. <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't expect. <laughs> I think I would only be impressed if actual angels flew down from heaven and, and filled the stands. <laughs> they come out of the cornfield. <laughs> That's right, they come yeah. out of the cornfield. But there's no cornfield. It's going to be the beginning of August. The, the, wait, how the corn is knee high by the 4th of July. That's what they say in Iowa. Knee high by the 4th of July, and this is going to be a month later, so it's going to be like waist high. Like you look I mean, at all the, you get you look at the posters. The thing that makes that field iconic is uh, is the corn. It's all about the cornfield. Well, well, it will be pretty easy to know when you've hit a home run because if it hits the cornfield, <laughs> ain't nobody finding that ball. I'm not going in there. You I'm know what's in there? there? Rats and shit. I'm yeah, not going in there. There's probably okay. aliens in like, there. Man. <laughs> if I go in there and disappear, fuck all of you. <laughs> what are the uh, <laughs> somebody, someone gets a somebody, w? They tie him up to a rope, like just in case. <laughs> Hey, did you oh, find the ball? No, but I found a crop circle. <laughs> <laughs> I found a little green friend named Al. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, this, I, it's weird. I, it's dumb. The whole it's really thing, I don't even, right? look, I, I went to school in Iowa. I, I went to school about an hour away from this field. And this is one of the biggest tourist attractions in Iowa. That tells you more about Iowa than it does about the, the field of <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's a good movie, yeah. Uh, and they made when they made the movie, they took this field, uh, or they they um, paid the farmer who owned the land and said, hey, we're gonna build a baseball field to shoot a movie. Are you cool with that? And he's like, well, you're paying me, so they did it. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, they did a baseball field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, nobody plays on it. And, but he's he was smart enough to know, oh, this is gonna be a tourist attraction because yeah. the movie was huge. Yeah. And so they just advertise it, and you you can drive over there, and people have for the last 20 plus years. You drive out to the middle of nowhere, Iowa, and look at a baseball field that, frankly, is not a nice field. I've been there. <laughs> it's it's kind of like a rundown little league field. It's small. It, the the grass is uneven. It's like there's like hills in it. Uh, oh. That this. Yeah, this looks like the Sandlot, guys. <laughs> It is the same lot. It is a better movie. You're going to put twelve year olds. You're going to put two <laughs> professional iconic baseball yeah. teams on this field this for is, a dumb gag. This is a little weird. Right. Well, like, uh, players but they're, like, I'm not playing. You, they're going to remodel man. it, so I don't know who. May, I, I, I mean, the guy who owns this field must have made out really good because oh, you know yeah. major, major league baseball is going to pay to yeah. renovate this thing. Yeah. Which I mean, I guess it's good for him. I it's mean, really good for him. Yeah, he's doing this, 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 whoever, uh, you know, Dyersville, yeah, the, the town, oh, like, is going to have a ton of people come into the area. Yeah, it's, it's a it's, ton of money and, and to be there. It's, 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 it's as if Major League Baseball is actually like, what's a town that could use some more money? They played one. Dyersville, Iowa. Exactly. Let's go. They played one game this year already in London. The That was the big game of the year. So Major League Baseball is like, all right, we gotta expand our brand. We're gonna go to London, and in 2020, we're gonna go to Dyersville, Iowa. <laughs> Why hey. in the world is everybody going to fucking London to expand their goddamn sports? Yeah. But NFL is doing it. Why That's is it? It's the capital London. of the non-American world. It's the capital of the non-American world. It makes sense huh. when you say that. Uh, I suppose that kind of. I mean, it is kind of through. a center hub kind of. If you look at the map when it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> For all you flat earthers out there, <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of get you right here. Sure. Yeah. Well, also the British Empire, the old like uh, the old uh, adage, uh, uh, the sun never sets in the British Empire. I thought it was the Roman Empire. No, no, not the Roman Empire. The yeah, British Empire. Oh no! All roads lead to Rome. That's Roman. Right. That's right. That's right. 
and everything and started in as Africa. As when in so. Rome. <laughs> So there you oh, go. Brothers. All right. Well, I think yeah. we've all agreed well, that this is a dumb idea. It's a dumb idea, but it's a benefit. But, but let me to tell you, I, I got to benefits from it, but I'm but not, ideally, I'm one guy sure. really benefits no. from this this entire thing. True. There. I mean, well, he makes the most money, but the town's gonna he make comes, money from it. True. He comes out, throws the pitch. <laughs> I gotta got make another comment uh, about this. This is just uh, something I heard on the <laughs> on uh, CBS radio. This this dude, John Feinstein. I'm ready to get, I'm gonna edit this out. We're gonna edit this out. <laughs> I gotta throw this out here. This, uh, CBS does this CBS Sports Radio, and then they do their announcements. And, and John Feinstein does this segment about about the Field of Dreams, and he goes and he's talking about he they, he does this uh, tells a story of uh, the news story about oh the White Sox are gonna play this game at the Field of Dreams, and oh it's an interesting idea and blah blah blah. And then at the end he goes. Yeah, I saw, that, uh, I saw that movie in theaters in 89, and my wife leaned over to me and said, if you cry, I'm going to divorce you. And he goes, what, no man, any man who doesn't cry at that part, at the end of that movie, uh, doesn't understand baseball or life for that matter. And for the record, it took a while, but my wife did divorce me. <laughs> <laughs> and, that was, and this was like an advertisement for CBS Sports Radio. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm only pointing out that this is not my own observation. The guys on CBS, they talked about it for the next like hour and a half, and they kept replaying it. And they're like, "That is the saddest thing I've ever heard." And I can't believe he did that. And I, and I can't unhear it now. And I've been telling everyone, and you can't unhear it. And they're like, "Every time you're gonna think of this movie, you're gonna think of John Feinstein getting divorced." <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of woman leans to a, a man in this movie and says, "If you cry, I'm going to divorce you"? Why would you say that? That woman. Yeah. Okay. So, side note, um, James Earl Jones and baseball movies, like iconic baseball movies. Sandlot. Yeah. Sandlot. And and Field of Dreams and, and, and Big Along, like I mean, like James Earl Jones knows what he's good at, man. Yeah. He yeah. knows. Vader. Sandlot. I am your father. I mean, Mufasa. Deep, deep, deep yeah. voice roles. Fucking Mufasa. coming to America. Mufasa. He was in Conan. Okay, we're not going to get into Jones. He's fucking <laughs> That's dope. a whole other yeah. episode. Yeah. Conan, though? Yeah, right? I mean, I know. I, mean, I like Conan. Conan right? I think those movies are horrible. Oh, come on. But it's, I mean, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger at his best. Horrible. Just, like, just Conan, swinging the sword and Conan. Conan, Conan. Uh, Conan Destroyer. And then Red Sonja. All right, that's a whole nother. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Sorry. All right. It's time to move on. We're so. moving right along in Otter Nose. Now I'm very excited for our favorite segment of the week, gentlemen, because we're gonna have a very fun conversation about this. But gentlemen, of course, it is time for the Jack of the Week. Yes. <laughs> I feel like the Frenchman from the movie A Little Mermaid when he's trying to put the lobster in the pot. I am so excited. Oh, what's the way <laughs> this? You just watched The Little Mermaid recently? Yeah. The, the new one? Did you see the new one? No, I haven't seen the new one yet. Is it out yet? No. I don't know. It's not it hasn't even started yet. I don't know. I don't follow it. It came out yesterday. It was like... It came out yesterday. <laughs> I bet people were talking about it. It's going to be yeah. realistic again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah. the jag offs, offs of the week yeah, it's a lot are... Of S on that end. Are... All the people who worked at what prison? Uh, the Manhattan, uh, what, correctional prison? Excuse me, I, I butchered the name. Uh, the Manhattan facility that... Uh, <laughs> there, there were how many people were uh, we're, we're going to edit this. <laughs> how many okay. people were working at that facility? Do you have the name right yet? What, isn't it the no. Metropolitan or the Metro? Yeah, because you were supposed to memorize it. <laughs> Shit, that's right. <laughs> Yo. You're right, we are going to edit this. <laughs> we're going to round the two. Uh, the jagoffs of the week this week are. I don't have yet. So Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this is going splendidly. Let's wait for it. Do, do, suspense. Do, do, you gotta build do, do, the suspense. Do, 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 do. This is the part where we play commercials. If we <laughs> That's commercials. right. And we'll be right back, folks, from another word from our sponsors. We don't have any yet, so this is the part where we would fill in time for advertisements. This could be your space. And so that's <laughs> Call 1-800-I-don't-have-a-number-for-this in order to get your advertising space now. Do you have it yet? No. <laughs> All right, well, like, uh, we're just going to... Oh, get up. Got it? You good? Wait, no. Yeah, uh, start over. All right. The Jagoffs of the Week this week are... 
the Metropolitan Correction Center on Park Row in Manhattan. That's right, folks. Everybody who worked at the prison sure. where Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide. What a bunch of jagoffs! Yeah. I mean, finally we got the guy. He, we're gonna we're gonna put him in prison. We're gonna learn some stuff about the Illuminati and everything <laughs> that's going on. And he fucking commit suicide. He was on suicide watch. I mean, no, we're getting to that. We're gonna get to that. But he was on suicide watch. Yeah. They were supposed to have people there yeah. watching him, yeah. all that stuff, and then all of a sudden, oh, yeah. now I'm dead. <laughs> like he announces it, I'm dead. Hello, oh, you know what the fuck? Fucking uh, come on, it's New York man. New 30, York. 30 this shit minutes, wouldn't have happened in Chicago. Thirty minutes, every thirty minutes, they were supposed to go and check on him, and he's supposed to have a buddy in there. It's like buddy system. He had a buddy. The fact that he even had a buddy. He had a buddy in the inmate. Getting, he getting checked on every 30 minutes. And um, they escorted his buddy out. And the new guy didn't go and check on him. Actually, it was two guards that was supposed to go and check. Let's so just, Let's just, you know. Also, uh, some other facts uh, that came out about this. Uh, the camera was surreptitiously moved. So that it was so. not covering his cell. No, there so. were strangle marks found around his neck from prior attempts of suicide. Which, yeah. what? Yeah. Um, what? What? Uh, 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 yeah, the, the guards were called out. They were gone for like half an hour. Um, there were there are some people who said they heard noises of strangulation happening, which I mean could happen if you're you know. Has I anybody your neck from, ever in the history of suicide? Tried to strangle themselves to death? That is an interesting question. I don't even know. Wait, how would one, uh, I missed. Wait. This is the butterfly approach. How, oh. I've never. What? I don't know. I mean, do I've never heard of the idea of strangling yourself to death. But isn't erotic erotic asphyxiation just that? Yeah, it is. Technically, yes. Do you use your own hands? No, it's somebody else uses like, like a belt or something. Yeah, use a belt around the uh, trigger warning. Um, I'll go around something to do so, but if anybody has experience with this, <laughs> leave us a note. <laughs> Comment on the on the bucket. But I don't I'm know. I'm I'm like, he did, so he tried to strangle himself. He tried to choke well, himself. Well, they said they had no, strang- he, There were strangulation marks on his well, neck he, before the day he. He yeah. attempted before, so that's. Either he he does that mean could just yes. not, it doesn't mean it he could tried, mean, he tried okay, to okay. He, he tried to hang himself like before. Yeah, impossible. so he was on suicide watch, and they they took him off eleven days ago. So this is they like, tried to do it. I'm a piece of shit. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> who who decided? Oh, he's better now. <laughs> That's the whole point. Like, who was the Did he one? tell him? He was like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm no, right. you know what, y'all? I was just, man, I don't know what was wrong with me. I was, I, I was fucked up in the head. I'm good. Just send me back. I'm good. Like, no, 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 just let me in here. No, I'm good. I'm fine. You convinced me, sir. Hey, hey, you gonna use that fork? No, okay. I'm, I'm just gonna take this. No, I'm just gonna be here. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about me. <laughs> would you, would you like a spoon? <laughs> like, I'm just gonna cut these bed cheese real quick. Just, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I always, I mean, I thought, I, I thought that, like, I mean, what the hell does he have in there to hang himself with? Like, how can you all leave him in there? Well, I mean, with, did, so what do you, what do you got? Dude? His just, clothes. So he hung his, he, he, he hanged himself with his clothes? I don't know, he could have. Because we don't even know what, what he is. Bed sheet possible. I mean, bed sheet is possible. He, he could have taken off his pants. But do they even give you bed, like, you just get a cop, don't you? I don't know. I've never been. Not when you're on suicide, <laughs> or, or when you're on suicide watch, they take away the. That's, they take that's away. That's my point. Well, but then you know what? They took him off and they put him back in his little okay, cell. Okay, let's, let's be butt. real. They weren't watching him, so he could have hung himself with with a rope. Like <laughs> they weren't watching him. It was Mr. Epstein with the rope <laughs> in the jail cell. Like they, they could. <laughs> he could have. He could have done anything. They Jeff, didn't care. So Jeff just pulled a rope out of his pocket. Yeah, broke that shit. He pulled it out of his ass. Yeah. <laughs> That I mean, that, is, that is a trick. That would have been a trick. That's a trick. That's a trick, man. To, 
Someone, someone, someone during lunchtime gave him a very He's strong like, piece guys, of cord. I've, I've been saving this. Stuck it right up the bottle. I, I, need, I need a lot of it, so I've been saving <laughs> it. I ain't ready to do this. He's doing, he's doing the magic <laughs> trick with the scars, but how does it is out of his ass. Like, like, hey, bro, <laughs> thank God no one's watching right now. Oh, Lord. <laughs> hey, then he made himself disappear. A so man's tampon. Just, and now I'm just going to go in there myself. <laughs> Hit in his own asshole. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hit in his own ass. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, we were having a very interesting conversation yeah, right? about this and all of the implications and things of what this could be. <laughs> is this is this real? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's not, we don't want to get too in depth into this, well, but, but I, do got, I gotta say, my, do I gotta say my favorite quote <laughs> that I read so far. I read it earlier. I, my favorite go. quote that I read so far from uh, an article from NBCNews.com. Um, so the former Colorado Supermax prison warden uh, said, "Is there a way that this could have been avoided?" The answer <laughs> is yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> And he was just like, Absolutely. yeah, it could have not happened. Yeah, it could not have. I mean, that's how stupid this is. <laughs> what a bunch of jagoffs, man. What are you doing, New York? <laughs> New York, this would not have happened in Chicago. In nope. Chicago, we take care of the people <laughs> who are supposed to go on death row. Was oh, those, those have been I don't think he was on death row. He was on death row. No, 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 not, no, yes, no not even. He close. hasn't even had trial. Yeah, no. right? yeah, there's no trial. Like, we haven't even. Well, we all, we all agree. If he had made it to prison, <laughs> if you're, then. If you're a Jeff, Je- Jeffrey Epstein, though, you're probably not living in Chicago. Oh, he would have been, you know, shanked or something for sure. No, he wouldn't have been here. No. No. He's, he moves to LA or New York. Because yeah, well, that's where I mean, people like that go. Well, he would no. Well, he would have been in Florida had he gotten a longer sentence, but he did. He he did technically serve time in Florida. I, I, I meant before he was he got tried in New York, so New York would have kept him, unless right. he asked for like a transfer or something, and then he could kind of go anywhere. But either way, he's a jag off. They're all jag offs. I mean, for God's sakes, we were gonna finally maybe learn some stuff about what's going on. I mean, that was. I mean, this is a hell of a thing, man. I mean. But, there are a lot of powerful people. Absolutely, they said on the his little uh, black, red book. They the said though the black book. It's one of the guards book. was a substitute. So does this mean that we're not paying our guards enough to actually be there twenty four hours? Did the other guard call in sick? I'm sorry, guys, I'm sick. Call in the substitute guard. But I mean, in reality, like, hey, guard. By the way, you might not just want to go into work today, right? You might just want to stay home with your family and all this money here. <laughs> Is that money sliding <laughs> over? <laughs> all right, yeah. well, uh, all right. Bye. Oh, well, we'll call him the substitute. Hey, here comes Henry Farkwinkle, the substitute fucking uh, uh, fucking guard, beat guy. Guy, guard guy. It's the guard guy who has a fake badge Just and a, a name tag. <laughs> they basically <laughs> said. Hey. He dressed up like a like a like an English like fucking cop, just like I'm gonna watch Epstein. But he has a Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Farwinkle, how's Epstein? He's doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask questions. <laughs> As he moves the camera. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> How long are you going to be out of shift here, Mr. Farwinkle? Don't ask questions you don't want answer to. I will be here as long as job takes. <laughs> Putting on gloves. <laughs> and his, his ass is out the country like a motherfucker. He gone. Huh? He gone. I mean, if he is still alive, they snuck him out. Oh, no, I'm talking about the, the, the oh, guard, 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 guard guy. is gone. If who's still alive? Oh, uh, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, Hashtag conspiracy. Could he be still alive? I mean, could he have possible. enough money? On the real, the way this went down, absolutely. El Chapo got out. But didn't El Chapo, I think El Chapo's he's dead. He's got out. Of, oh, no, he's, he's dead. dead. But he's, he's dead got, now, but he did get out. Yeah. But he got out a few times. Yeah. So let's say this person with a lot of money and a lot of names in this book managed to just doppelganger himself and slip out. Yeah, well, theoretically, this scenario with how all the, the facts are, it's either he was assassinated, yeah, or your theory is plausible. It is plausible that they could have done the old, the old switcheroo. How you would have gotten him out unnoticed, I don't really know, but I guess if there did are no any, guards if, in his vicinity... Did anybody hour, see him kill himself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Obviously no. not. Except for Henry Farwinkle. <laughs> we can't find his ass either. I see no. nothing. I saw nothing. No. Don't ask questions. Nothing. I know nothing. 
Hey, are Russian uh, athletes juicing? I know not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know the answer to that one. That one's a yes. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, who knows, man? He could be... Uh, I mean, this is the this is the point where we uh, peons of the world don't know really anything. I mean, when, when you have that... I mean, he was... I mean, look, this dude... This is one of those... So, like, so like for, for us who are actors here, you know, Nora, Ron, and myself, uh, when we're on camera, we're, we, can, we, are, we are on camera talent, but we also do some behind the scenes. This guy is a behind, behind the yeah. scenes guy. Oh, yeah. Like, he's he's yeah. like the producer in the studio that nobody sees at all and just does all the shit. That's who this guy was. And he was doing some fucked up shit for all these basically on-camera talent type personalities, right? And the on-camera types are the ones who are making all the real money for all the people, particularly this guy. So, they and, and they're going to continue to make a bunch of money. They don't want this guy to be no. leaking information about what they're doing or how they're doing it. Or like that even stuff. A little so bit. either he dies or they get him out and they put him on an island and go, yeah. uh, you're welcome. Because look at what, even just look at what, what it's doing for Bill Clinton. Because even his name was just thrown out. He happened to be on the plane with him. He never said anything like, oh, yeah, it was him involved. Like, if your name is even close to his right now. Dude, the name association yeah. is, first of all, it's not over. They're saying that this the case is closed since he's dead. Oh, no, no General like, Attorney General Attorney Barr, General is, that they're looking into Barr it. is so on top of it. He's like, all right, well, we're about to go. He's like, and how do I get Trump out of this? Exactly. <laughs> How do I get President He's Trump about out of this? to start attacking people that was names brought up, man. They gonna start answering questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they did say that Trump basically stopped. Excuse me, stopped hanging out with this guy. Trump stopped hanging out with Epstein in like two thousand four. There's already a bunch of people. I just thought this would be an interesting thing to do. It's so tiny yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. There's already people who've done a ton of analysis and all the information and everything. Right. Apparently, Trump. Stop hanging out with this guy in like 2004 because they fought over a property. property. That sounds oh, yeah. interesting. I could believe that. I could believe that. But it's like, really? But I mean, Trump didn't know him. They hung out. I mean, I mean, there's there's one woman who said that she didn't see Trump or she wasn't molested by Trump at least, but he might have been there or right. she heard Same comments thing. or something. Yeah. So you don't really, like, it's hard to say without any actual proof and evidence, but it's not good. No, Either way, though, it's not good. look, even if, yes, to your point, like, Attorney Barr might be trying to get the president, Donald Trump, out of it, right? But I still, he, that could be one side effect of it, but I still want him to investigate because we'd oh, all yeah. like to know some shit. Oh, hell yeah. Like, investigation is definitely necessary. I oh, mean, you yeah. have all these underage girls who've been dealing with this. They deserve justice yeah, in this they case. Absolutely do. Well, I mean, justice has been served. Kind of. I mean, dude's dead. True, but Possibly. it wasn't in the way they would have liked. Uh, say, but... it, in this case, I mean, if we're thinking what we think we think, someone went in there and killed him. <laughs> or <laughs> or did they? Or did, did they? Bum, bum, bum. Because what is the result, actually? What What is the end result of justice in this situation? Because it was death row, ultimately. It was him paying death, I think he would have been. Paying money back and death row. Correct? That's where he would have been hidden? Are you saying, oh, what's, are you, are you saying no, what is I'm the saying justice? what is the justice is is mostly death row, right? Yeah, but capital punishment is only, I mean, you, you don't, he was not going to be, I don't think he would be uh, sentenced to death row yeah. for this. Yeah, he hasn't it would killed be a lifetime prison. It would be a lifetime sentence. Yeah, a lifetime sentence. It would have been, well, it would have been multiple recurring and lifetime sentences. Exactly. Because of all of yeah, he would have died in jail. But yeah, yeah. then he would have killed himself. Did, yeah. But, but it would have been a cushy jail? No. 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 Oh, not no. now. He would have been gone. He would have been. Yeah. Uh, no, no. <laughs> they they would have done that. He <laughs> would never know. He would have been saying work. a lot of yes, sirs. He <laughs> would never know the word cushy again. Still out there. 
There's pro- there's probably I mean tons that we don't even. Well, know. Well, someone had to take over, right? Trafficking that dude. This is global. This is, this is. Yeah. This is the type of thing well, where like we would all know. like to be able to make a positive impact on it to like shut these things down, but these things are so secretive, and there are so many people in the world, and there are so many children born in underprivileged areas that are easily as accessible to these sick psychopaths but you know that, that like you know what, I, what can one person you know do it's well, not even think let me cut you off it's not even children that's being targeted like some sick ass people can target us and try to get us into yeah. some, like sex trade yeah. and the no thing problem. is you have to you got to be conscious and 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 know what's going around, you know, your surroundings, because what if you're at the mall, I don't go to the mall, but what, what if you're at the mall, and some people come up to you, and dude's like, hey, you know, they're trying to evacuate people, or, hey, come with me this way, and yeah. what if you don't question this dude, and you go, and next thing you know, you with other people, you in a van going, on some, you know what I'm saying? So it's people that's doing all types of stuff, I think people need to question everybody, you know, if something like that happens, because there's a lot of terrorism stuff that's going on, so something like that could happen, where they're evacuating, but I need to be like, hey, can you show me some ID? Like, who are you? What's you know what's going on? Instead of just automatically assuming that this person is in good faith, mm-hmm. but it's that's, scary. That's also something that you brought up that we're not talking about is the idea of that. Not just he would have uh, kind of opened up this door to all these famous and wealthy people who have, might have been a part of this, but he might have opened up the doors to his contacts and the people that he worked with and how he got these young girls and where they came from. He, we could have potentially shut that down as a whole, which unfortunately to me it seems like the media is not really talking a lot about that aspect. They're talking about like, well, all the wealthy people that we could have had instead of all the the the, the things that we could have shut down at least just from this this venue, we could have stopped that wherever it was, unless they've already stopped it. I don't know. I think it was at least. I mean, I don't know how long it goes, so I've only heard about a, a few of the situations, and they don't even, you know, a lot of the stuff is still private, the, the girls, but I was really shocked by just that some of the girls I was hearing about who were involved, they were uh, people from Florida who were, uh, I mean, to, in their minds underprivileged, but they were, they're not like, I mean, they, they weren't like people who were like recent immigrants or mm-hmm. something. They weren't people who had absolutely not like no family. Yeah. Or they're not like war. Like no. these, these are people who who needed money for college, mm-hmm. who were like intending to go to college and like they, and they, they got, wanted money for college. Yeah. And they got recruited and that's because how like you can work as a, like, as a masseuse. Exactly. Yeah. The, woman, exactly. the one woman involved in all this would promise modeling yep. and money for college yeah. and stuff. And so they would be lured into these mm-hmm. rings. And then, and then, all you can get more money lot. by by recruiting other people. Yeah. Yep. I mean, they unsealed thousands of pages of information, and then he dies the next day, the next morning. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like very conspicuous. Dude, times. it's just so like I, the timing is just. I hope they watched his property and his shit better than they watched him. That's <laughs> all I have to say. Like, oh, before there's, like, a random fire. Like, oh, Epstein's castle's burning. We don't, <laughs> no one was paying attention. Like, yeah. So so should the yeah. property go to all the victims? I don't think they want to be there. <laughs> well, I mean, they're going to sell it, but... I mean, I'm but, sure they'll... I mean, I'm sure they'll, the government, the government get, takes that money. Yeah, actually, do they get... He's dead, so does... How does that work for well, me? He, so do they it, get it's, money? It's pro- I mean, I'm sure he's got... Does it go to the will? Who's in the will? Exactly. Who's, who's that's the that's the first is, thing. Beyond my legal knowledge. That's the well, you know, it always goes to the will first. But if this dude is brought up on all these charges, man, they go confiscate that shit. Man. More than likely. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. I guess the government could disperse. The government the disperse, 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 disperse yeah. they want. That would be swift. That, that, would, that would be, be justice. That would be the justice. Justice I would want to see. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we gotta wrap this up. Yeah. This has been uh, a lot of good discussion, but we gotta get this wrapped up and. Uh, so anyway, let's let's end it like this. So all you guys working at the prison, you a bunch of jagoffs. Yeah, Good job, you jagoffs. Yeah, okay, man. Mr. Henry Frickwinkle. Da da. All right, fuck you. And that's not the type of da we're talking. About. That's the Russian da, not the not the good da like the bears. So fuck you, you jagoffs. All right. Um. With uh, with that being said, we're gonna wrap this up. But before we wrap this up, summertime is almost ending. And Norm hasn't been on a boat yet. That's right. Preach. <laughs> 
Norm has not been on a boat yet. You know what? I've seen all these boats. I've seen sailboats, big boats, yachts, dinghies. You know, I, I rescue boats, police boats. Hey, you know, Chicago, if you got like a fire boat or a police boat, you know, uh, I don't care. I want to be on a boat. Uh, okay, maybe not a police boat. No police y- boat. Y'all can stay where you are. No, no offense. Um, shout out to Chicago Fire, Chicago PD. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Chicago, the, t- man. the TV shows or the actual departments? Cool. <laughs> but no, Norm wants to be on a boat. So if y'all know anybody who happens to be on a boat, we would love to all be on a boat together to kick off the end of summer before the freezing winter comes. And let's smash a bottle off a boat and have a ripping time. That sounds about right. That sounds like a good end, right? Ripping yeah. time, yeah. Ripping old, cool. ripping old time. Yeah, give me That's a fucking boat. We will, we will, we will <laughs> not we will, rip your boat. We will not rip your boat. We'll just have a ripping time. Ripping, on the boat. Yeah, we will get. We will, buy, we will get a champagne bottle with a replica of your boat. Put it into the champagne bottle and then break it off of the side. And, and then you can you can keep the, the replica boat. Yep. But it'll be a grand old time, a ripping grand old time on a boat. Hashtag Norm needs a boat. Um, now with that. Uh, if you enjoy what you've listened to here on the Chicago 60 Podcast, yeah. Yeah. then uh, please follow us on Facebook at Chicago 60. That's 60 spelled out S-I-X-T-Y at Chicago 60. Go follow us and like our page there. We will be bringing out a lot more content on that page that you will only be able to see if you follow that page. You can also go to our Instagram page at Chicago underscore 60. That's what the numbers this time. Chicago underscore 60. We'll be coming up with a lot of new content on that page very soon That's right. that you will not be able to see unless you follow that page and it will only be on the Instagram page. So you got to go there. You should also go to YouTube and just type in Chicago 60 and then subscribe and hit the little notification bell because we're going to be coming out with some sketch comedy, some other, some other stuff that you're just not going to be able to see. That's right. Unless you're on the YouTubes, because very soon this thing is gonna be a business and a uh, business. That's what I meant. Okay. And uh, there are gonna be things that <laughs> you won't uh, you won't be able to get unless you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell. More of that to come throughout the rest of this year. That's right. And then finally, if you are listening to this on Leol iTunes, please subscribe if you haven't already and leave us a review. We would really appreciate it. It helps us get up in the standings. Particularly for those people in Chicago, we like to be at the top so people can get good news and hear great discussion like you've heard tonight. So leave us a five-star review. Share us with your friends. Post things about our show on your Facebook pages and social media because that really helps us out. Uh, We will have a Patreon account very soon if you want to donate so that we can continue to bring you great content and help us get all that fancy furniture we're talking about. That's right. We can uh, look a lot more spiffy. So please go and do that. And very soon we will also be on Spotify by the end of the month. So look out there if you're a Spotifyer. So you can check us out on all of those different platforms and help out the Chicago 60 podcast and the Chicago 60 show. All right. Last thing, of course, don't forget we're going to be doing our pregame show at the CBTC. That's the Chicago Bears Tailgating Club. You should come. Check us out September 5th for the Bears against the Evil Packers on September 5th for the opening game of the Chicago of the NFL season, yep. the 100th. NFL season, so make sure to mark that down in your calendars. We will be there from noon to the end of the game. Yeah. We're going to be doing our pregame show. It's going to be fun. Ron and I will be doing that. Norm will be producing. Joe will be there doing whatever Joe does, and there will be a lot of other cool people there as well. We're what is the out. location again? <laughs> it is again across from Reggie's Bar in South Lake. Oh, so I don't want to. I'm going to remember it's, Reggie's. It's, it's basically in a lot. So just research Reggie's Bar, yes, and it'll be, and you'll see out, a bunch of people. Yes, it's outside. It's outside. It's outside. It's outside. It's outside outside in, a, in a lot. Would you? I would say it. <laughs> Jesus, Joe. So yes, you will find it there. So make sure to do that as well. Every home game there. Do that. All right. Well, gentlemen. We have to end every episode with our favorite phrase of all time. Let's do it. And that is... Fuck down, down and, and fuck, fuck the Packers! Packers. That's right. <laughs> all right, we will see you all next week. Good night, everyone. Yeah, we out, y'all. Hey, that was a good outro, man. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> all right. For all the people still not watching, good day to you. Boom, but watch it later. Ah!